It's Friday on Risk and Reward. That means elevator pitch. One entrepreneur, 30 seconds, a moving elevator. It starts now. I am here with Nehal Madani. He is the co-founder of Plain Legal. Nehal, what's your idea? So Plain Legal is software to automate the repetitive parts of legal practice. We instantly collect client information. We automatically create legal documents and government filings using that information. And once everything's filed, we track the status of cases and deadlines by going to government data sources. We start with intellectual property law, and our customers are preparing and managing over 15,000 IP filings with our software. We save law firms a lot of time and headache. We help them keep their clients happy and make them more profitable. All right. Well, let's see what kind of feedback you get from the judges. Speaking of the judges, Luke Williams is here, professor of innovation at NYU. Nisa Moyles, New York Angels. Kelly keenan Trumpor from C. Jane Invest. Luke, as you know, you are in the hot seat. What did you make of the pitch? We're in the hot seat, and I think I'm the only uh, non-lawyer on the panel. So uh, help me understand the market. What is the competitive landscape? Because I can imagine that uh, document automat- uh, automation in legal is there's a lot of competitors coming in. So how do you stand out from your competitors? Absolutely. So that market it has been around for quite some time. Where our key differentiation is, is that we're integrated solution that sees transactions from beginning to end. So we also help law firms collect client information. We then generate the legal documents, and then we also have software that manages it. So we're a much more robust integrated solution that brings a lot more value than just creating a single document. Nisa, what is your take? Do you hear trust issues or proprietary concerns? I mean, how do lawyers feel about sharing this kind of information? Right. That was one of my questions, actually, was regulatory. But I I would have loved this when I was practicing law. Um, I I have two other questions. One is, how long is your sales cycle, given the fact that you're selling to lawyers who are traditionally very slow to adopt new technology? (laughs) And the other is... um, how easy is it for you to expand on your core product offering, which is trademarks, into other areas of the law? It's a great question. Um, so sales cycle depends on the size of the firm. Historically, I agree, lawyers have been slow to adopt, but they're very hungry for technology today. They need to be efficient. The market has changed. So for small law firms, we will do a demo and have a credit card for an annual subscription in the same call. For larger law firms, it can take a few months, but really law firms are really hungry for technology at this point. And then your second question was? Expanding the products yes. offering so beyond. So we built it with an eye towards expanding to other practice areas. So intellectual property is just our base market. But the problems we're solving are really universal across the legal industry. Law firms from small to big, as well as in-house legal departments, all face the same automation needs. So I want to jump in, Kelly, before you, if you don't mind, but how much do you hear about, okay, just how secure is this transaction? Because if any legal documents are leaked, that really hurts the reputation of the firm. Absolutely. So we take security very seriously. Being a lawyer myself, I made sure that was one of our primary needs from a technical standpoint. We've implemented a lot of security. We use standard bank rate security. We use secure servers. So law firms are really comfortable now sharing our data and their client data on our servers. Kelly, what is your take on all you've heard so far? So this sounds really interesting. And yes, as a lawyer myself, I know that there's so much that goes into the bureaucracy of filings. And wherever you can have some help with that, it's usually a great pitch to lawyers. One of the things that I'm wondering about beyond security, it sounds like your product can take a lot of information and automate it into the forms. How are you making sure that that information is correct, even internally? Because, of course, things like malpractice, mm-hmm. putting in the wrong name, having the wrong Absolutely. phrasing would be a big issue. How are you handling that? That's a great point. So attorneys don't historically like black boxes. So what we do is we take a legal document and bring it 80 percent away. The attorney does a final check. So we take a lot of the administrative repetitive works out of it, but they're still able to vet it, still make, able to make sure it's accurate and meeting their client duties and standards. So Luke, based on what you've heard, would you make introductions or not? Oh, for sure. This is this the legal industry is ripe for disruption. This is this is hot. I'd make introductions. All right, that's one yes, yeah. so, Lisa. Uh, I agree. Um, I think that there's a lot of money, VC money, going into the space right now. So if indeed you have white space and you're you can compete with the more well-funded incumbents, then I would certainly pursue this further. Kelly. Definitely. I mean, I know that especially in IP law, there's so many things on the horizon. I mean, people are trying to keep track of patent trolls and things like that. So anything that eases that burden definitely is intriguing at the least. So be very interested to see where you go with this. Thank you. All right. So now that is three yeses for plain legal. Well done. And thank you to our judges, Luke Williams, Nisa Moyles, and Kelly Keenan-Trumpor. Thank you, judges. Well done. Congratulations. We 